Welcome everyone to the L7C Podcast Content Tuesday edition. Today we are here to talk about the October 12th college football slate that just concluded with all the big games, including the Ohio State Oregon game. We got the captain Byron Mitchell and the anime expert Cedric Ware with us. How are you guys doing today? Better than I was Saturday night, I'll tell you that. Just take it a day at a time, man. Just a day at a time. I feel it. I feel it. Well, Byron, you alluded to Saturday. Obviously, the one of the night games, the big night game, OSU in Oregon. You said you're feeling a little bit better. So, Byron, tell us what happened that game. So, the Ohio State Buckeyes went into uh, Oregon and played the Oregon Bucks. We ended up losing 32-31. to 31. Will Howard, 28 for 35, 326 yards, two touchdowns. He had a fumble that he recovered uh, because of, I think it was a bad snap. Went on Jenkins, 11 for 23 yards, a touchdown. He had a fumble where basically the defender basically ripped the ball out of his arms. Great by Henderson, 11 for 87 yards. Will Howard had a rushing touchdown. Oh, I think they were the only rushing touchdown for the day. And Mecca Buka, 10 for 93, touchdown. Jeremiah Smith, 9 for 100 yards and a touchdown. Defensively, this was probably our worst defensive effort this whole year. Uh, we gave up a 100-yard receiver and a 100-yard rusher. We didn't get any turnovers, no pressure or sacks on the quarterback. Um, so the defense is probably the thing I didn't like most about this Buckeye performance. Okay. Cedric, how about you, man? Man, I thought it would last a little bit longer before I have to talk about Mr. Burke. Mr. Burke, I need you to come to the front of the congregation, sir. That literally is it. Like, yes, I would love to get more. Well, I'd love to see us get more pressure on Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel is a very experienced college quarterback. It was his sixth season. He's literally, besides maybe Cam Rising, who's been on medical redshirt for like the last three years, has played the most college football at the quarterback position that's currently playing right now. And so naturally I expect him to do things. Like it's not like he's some slouch out here. My problem is how the hell or is it, is it making it that easy? Like my brother, Mr. Burke, you were getting toasted out there, like just purely outplayed. And I, I can't even cap the one touchdown. The first touchdown, I think it was Stewart hit. That was a dirty ass catch. I don't think Denzel turned around the entire time that pass was thrown in the end zone. But I just don't know. I f- don't like that. That's how this game kind of capsized for us. In that, yes, sure, let up one big play that happens in college football. But as a fact, it was like two big throws a touchdown, and it just seemed like the secondary just broke down out there. And I get it. It's hard covering receivers because everyone's fast. Everyone's good at that position. But at the same time, again, one, sure, but if this is supposed to be, believe this, it was it him or someone else, or Igmanosa that said, like, the silver bullets are coming back. Well, my guy, I don't know what the hell is going on out there because – Letting up two receivers just moss you guys out here like it's nuts. I don't think that's going to work for us moving forward. But yeah, early on in the game when I was watching it, and it wasn't even like the first touchdown. Like I saw them kept throwing it his way. I'm like, are they targeting Burke on purpose? And then after the first deep balls, I like, mm, maybe. And then after the second one, I'm like, oh, they're actually really targeting. Denzel Burke, our best quarter, like they are purposely going at him. And I'm like, oh, this is bad because there was one time where he did get a tackle. I thought the guy was going to break the tackle, but he was missing. T- like he that was the worst game he's ever played. He was getting put on an island. Yeah, absolute worst game he's ever played. Um, I think it was the first catch that the guy had where he basically drugged him for like 10 yards. That was that was embarrassing on Denzel Burke's part. 
Oh, yeah, Stewart as Denzel's trying to either – I don't know if he was trying to punch the ball out, trying to strip the ball. I think maybe he tried initially, and then I think he was just trying to drag him out of bounds. But literally, Stewart literally just told him, hit the gym. Mm-hmm. Like, you're too little. You're not, you're not taking me down. Yeah, I, I mean, think he dragged him for 15 yards. Yeah, something like that. It was, yeah. Yeah, because you just look at the passing. Like you said, Stewart had 149. Johnson had 75. I mean, Ferguson had 62. Holden had one catch for 32. Like, they obviously had 341 yards passing combined with Dylan Gabriel, who went 23 uh, 34, like Byron said. But I, I don't know, guys. Like, for me watching the game, the first thing I truly realize is that when the talent is equal or close to it, our defense is not that good. 100%. Yeah, which is concerning Mm -hmm. because the entire like we know what this is going to look like. Like it's we're two weeks away from November, and especially Mm -hmm. with the college football playoff, depending on where you are and if you get buys or not. Sure, if we win the Big Ten, awesome, amazing. Mm -hmm. We still got to play the other (laughs) like other teams are similarly situated with the level of recruits that we have Mm -hmm. that put up big points. I mean, look across, as we're going to get to the rest of the slate of these games, scoring the ball is not something that these teams struggle with doing. Mm -hmm. It's For us, we got to be able to stop the ball. And right now, I don't know if we can. Like, I thought maybe if we stopped, shot down the run, like, I guess Oregon just really had their way. Like, Mm -hmm. passing, rushing, receiving. And I don't know if it's just Oregon's just that good, but there are other teams that are really good at good running backs and good quarterbacks and great receivers. So for this being like the first kind of highlight of what it would be like in the college football playoff, it was not a good performance for our defense. Yeah, because I know in the show notes, I did have the picture of Devontae Smith. It was giving almost that Alabama thing, like if a court, if a why receiver is cooking us? Why are we not making any adjustments? Like, why are we not sending him help? I, I really want to ask Jim Knowles that because that was he needed help and he didn't get any. I mean, they were talking about it, the commentators about Jim Knowles' strategy with why he doesn't send a blitz is because you're more prone to that one on one coverage. And then you may let up a big play. And honestly, to some degree, some some degree, what I've learned is I don't know if I can trust Denzel Burke one-on-one with the top receivers in the league right now or in college football right now. Because unless Stewart's about to win the Blitnikoff or unless Ferguson, Johnson, or Holden are, I don't think they are. I think they are good, but I don't think they are the best receiver in the nation good. If you can't cover those guys one on one, what are we going to do? Why should I blitz in the hopes of trying to get to Dylan Gabriel if you're getting smoked 30 yards down the field? And all he has to do is just throw it up there. Yeah, he had so much time, Dylan Gabriel. Like, you even saw some plays like where we didn't blitz at all and we looked like we were going to blitz and didn't. He just sat there. Like, Byron already said, he didn't get sacked. Like, no real QB pressure, nothing. He was able to just carve us up into your thing, Cedric. If the season ended today, I don't know the seedings exactly, but obviously we wouldn't be a, we wouldn't have a bye week. Like, we would have to take this Ohio State, even though they are struggling, they are, we would have to take this Ohio State team down to Tuscaloosa, and Denzel Burke would have to go guard the 17-year-old. Which he's probably getting cooked. Like, Ryan Williams is too good. Not to say here, say like that dude is a, like the way that man runs. Like I, I don't even like talking about it because it's honestly scaring the fuck out of me. That I don't think this dude can guard him because that's what I we were facing like, right now. If because mm. two fucking corners couldn't guard him, he made them run into each other on two separate occasions while busting the seventy yard touchdown runs, catches mm-hmm. and runs. Like <sighs> yeah. uh, plus. You have the similar situation where Dylan Gabriel somewhat mobile. I mean, Jalen Milrow. Mm-hmm. 
that was another thing that we gave up Dylan Gabriel rushing touchdown. And even that, like he mm-hmm. walked in that shit untouched. Oh, yeah. I believe it was a 20 yard run. Like he's at the end of the, in the red zone, mm-hmm. just skirt it right in there. And man. Yep. 27. It was a 27 yard run in the fourth quarter. Yeah. That's I think it was off of a trick play too, which is I guess not as concerning, but still you don't want to see Dylan Gabriel go untouched in the end zone. Yeah, the defense is really the story. Like they just they're they couldn't stop all that talk, like you just said silver bullets are back, this and that, and to just on national TV just get cooked the way they did. But we still had a chance to win that game. That last drive, we had a lot of mistakes. Will Howard, like, dropping the snaps and things of that nature. Then, obviously, they had the offensive pass interference with Jeremiah Smith. If you don't think it was, that's fine. If you do think it was, it's fine. It doesn't doesn't matter. What matters is what it was called on the field, and that's what it was called. Mm -hmm. We still had a chance. Will Howard, he scrambles in the middle of the field. Doesn't go down a second earlier to even attempt to call the timeout. Clock runs out. Game's over. Yeah, that last drive was disappointing because, like, the first snap, Will Howard tripped over nothing. I don't know if it was the field was wet at that time, but it didn't look like there was any rain on the field. I don't know if he just tripped over his feet, but he slipped. And the next play, Jeremiah Smith gets a touchdown. Not gets a touchdown. Gets a uh, first down, but it's called back because of the pass interference. And then we had that terrible, like, I don't know if it was play calling or if he was just, like, trying to make something out of nothing, but I just need him to make better decisions going forward. Like, he didn't turn the ball over, which he's been multiple turnovers the last couple of weeks. Um, he did have a fumble, but he recovered it because of a bad snap. But he didn't have any turnovers, it's just... That last decision making is just disappointing. Yeah. I mean, to your point, Byron, I don't know if it's. I think that last minute or so of clock time where we're moving, trying to move the ball, especially after that penalty, there's a lot of miscommunication that mm-hmm. definitely, like, boiling down like this. This is. This is the football. These are the big games. Like you are sometimes in that hot pressure seat of we have less than two minutes. We need to get down the field, either A, get into a goal position or score a touchdown. And you have to have a precision. You have to have the game plan there. And clock management was a big issue. And I don't know if that's a miscommunication, a misunderstanding from Brian Day's side. That the clock was going to run when the ball got set after the penalty on the offense, or on the Will Howard side, or Chip Kelly's, who's up in that booth, that no one's calling this time. Or at least, if you know the clock is running down, at least spike the ball, do something, call it quick, one quick play just to get it through. I, I don't know what the last play was called. It looked like he was. Trying to check down, and then it's just like immediately, like one check, not there. And he took off in the middle of the field. I mean, when you look at when the man slid, he's like, I think within the 20. Yeah, like I get it, man. You're trying to get as close as possible, sure that up. But my guy, like, the guy, I don't know if he's looking at the clock as he's running. I don't know if he's just trying to feel it out where he can get. As close as possible. It's just, it just seems like a lot of miscommunications, not really much of a plan going on to execute what needed to be done in that last minute. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, to go with the coaching thing, is in that situation, you got to tell, you got to tell your QB, like, hey, if nothing's there, you chuck that ball out of bounds so we get another mm-hmm. down. Because we were already, I think we were in field goal range. I mean, it would have been, and, a, it would have been, it would have been a deep, deep. Oh, deep. Okay. Like it's yeah, plus, uh, it would have been a plus of 50 burger. Yeah. 
And I mean, okay. they, they get with the clock, it, oh, six seconds. Mm-hmm. Like I'm talking like you, if it's not, if it's really not there, like I get trying to extend it, but at that point, I don't know if running the ball was even a good idea for him because by the time you're done checking down, you're already at probably three seconds. If you're checking down and starting to actually get some type of speed and momentum to run, it's already kind of too late. Like you get, like Martin said, I'm like coach, you got to chuck that out and just say, "Hey, man, let's see if you can kick it. If you can't, great. If not, I mean, at least you yeah, got you're a gonna shot. Lose, you're gonna lose anyway. You might as well like, All right. like at, least at least you got a shot. chance to kick. Yeah. I I want to know the pl- what the plan was with the timeout because there was points where I thought on that last drive maybe they should have called the timeout to like get the final plays in order and. But we never got to see what the plan was with that timeout. I was gonna say after, like Cedric said, after that penalty, there should have been a timeout call. Like you see, the clock is moving all the timeout. You have one left. You can't take them with you. Make that decision and call that timeout. Yeah, because I mean, like twenty seconds, twenty, I think almost thirty seconds burned off that penalty between mm-hmm. them trying to get back on the line and make a play call, which. A lot of people are like, oh, like they didn't know the clock was running. It's like, I mean, you're looking at the fucking scoreboards right in front of you. Like, if you're looking at the clock and it's coming down, you're like, if I'm, the, I don't know, if I'm, if I'm in that situation, I know we have to hurry up anyway because we have to get down the field. I just felt like there wasn't a sense of urgency, and I don't know if that was a miscommunication that they thought the coach was going to call a timeout, if they thought the clock was going to get reset for some reason because there was no whistles blown. Those the centers like, I mean, hey, Ohio State, I mean, shoot, you want to take the time, you go ahead. We ain't blowing no whistles. We ain't stopping. Let you better hike the ball. God, can you imagine? Well, he still ended Woosley. Can you imagine if the game would have ended on that? Oh, oh, that would, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> oh, my God. Because it's, just... it's already October 15th, and we already have to bring this man up because it's Mr. Ryan Day. Obviously, mm-hmm. after the loss, people like Cedric, like Cedric was just saying, like, how do you not know that the clock's going to start on the penalty? How do you not tell Howard to chuck it out? That's just like saying that championship level coach again. The stats are the stats. The record is the record, man. Ryan is two and six in the against top five opponents. Obviously, three of those losses are to Michigan. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it is what it is right now. Luckily, with the twelve team playoff. There's so many ways of football to make our way back to win the Big Ten Championship or get a a spot in the playoffs. The other problem, though, which the Buckeye fans um, aren't looking is, remember, there isn't any divisions for the Big Ten Championship. It's the two top teams in the Big Ten who are going. And currently, Ohio State is one, two, three, four. They are fifth place right now in the Big Ten. Yep. Oregon, Penn State, Indiana. Yep. I'm forgetting the fourth. Illinois. Illinois. Illinois, yep. Illinois is five and one in the conference. Penn State, Oregon, and Indiana six and zero. Obviously, there's going to be some changing. And Nebraska's five and one in the conference, mm-hmm. too. So yep. just remember, fans, like it's not like leaders and legends are east and west. Like it's literally the top two teams at the end of the Big Ten season go to the championship. championship. Yep. And you don't want to leave. Obviously, I still think we would get in the thing, but you don't want to leave that to chance. Yeah, because I mean, wanna... what do you get one spot for the champion? And yeah, and I think I think the runner up, the runner up. Yep, that was likely the running up runner up's going to get in on those five through twelve spots, and then that's just that's two people out of this conference. We ain't even talking about the SEC, mm-hmm. who's eating each other alive over there. Where like you're going to have a couple of teams with maybe just two losses. Yep, because mm-hmm. the SEC will get the automatic one. Their runner up would get in. Group of Power Five, the Big Twelve champ, the ACC champ, and depending, mm-hmm. like we always, if it's Clemson yeah. and Miami, both of them might get in. Like, yep. mm-hmm. so you don't want to, you just don't want to. I still think we're going to get in. You just don't want to leave it to chance. Yeah, you but control your own destiny. With looking at the own schedule now, because how these rankings are, and no one expected Indiana to be what they are, and Illinois and things like that. These games got a lot more important. Like that mm-hmm. Nebraska game, that Nebraska game is almost an eliminator game. 
Yeah. Because I think Nebraska also, they have a big game. They play Indiana. This side, like, if you're a Buckeye yep. fan, you need to lock into that. Mm-hmm. You're most likely rooting for Indiana. Yeah, because that would eliminate yeah. that would eliminate um Nebraska, Nebraska before we play. Plus, it, it also buffs up Indiana's worth. Mm-hmm. As we yeah. play Indiana the week before we play Michigan, yeah, which I don't particularly like. No, but and then obviously, I mean. With the Purdue thing too, but it's Purdue, whatever. But you got Nebraska. We have a bye week now. You got Nebraska, and then the new number three team in the country, N State. N State at their place. The time is still to be determined right now, but it's probably going to be twelve. But time is still TBD. This could be James Franklin finally trying to be like, let's knock these boys out for good. I mean, the most opportune time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's- I really hope it's not. But if it's a night game, I am my nervous fears. They got the best tight end in the country. Yes. Yep. He had a 17, 17 catches for like 200 or something crazy. 17 for 204. That as a tight end. That 224. is absurd. 224, yeah, thank you. <laughs> that is absurd. It's obnoxious. It really is obnoxious. Yeah, but like you said, Byron, we control our destiny, but... Again, Buckeye fans, you really got to look at the Big Ten standings because we're we're gonna go in we're gonna go into things like tiebreakers and who did you beat, who did you lose if things stay the same if we don't control our stuff. So, because Oregon, who was their tough? I mean, they got Illinois, Illinois, and Michigan are probably their two toughest games left. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> And they play Illinois while we're playing um, Nebraska on the 26th. Yeah. And they have Illinois and Michigan back-to-back. Yeah, those are their two toughest games. Back-to-back, then Maryland, Wisconsin, Washington. Yeah. If, they, if they're not looking ahead. Now, as a top, t- as a top team to another, <laughs> Oregon, don't do it to yourself this Friday. At Purdue at nighttime. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> as a as a team that's been there before, don't do it. Don't create a Rondell Moore. Oh my God. <laughs> I would like to think Dan Lanning's like, no, 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 no. I don't we know, are man. These, these Friday Big Ten games get crazy. They have been good. Man, but Byron, what what are your thoughts on Ryan, man? Like Brother, you were two and six against top what ten teams or top five teams? Top five, three have been the Michigan game. Top Mm -hmm. five teams. That is not good. This is why Ohio State fans fall for your head every year because you don't show up in big games like we want you to. And then some of them have been embarrassing losses, and some of them have been close, like this Oregon game. The Georgia. I don't know what you got to do. The Georgia game when we lost a last second field goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, missed field goal. Right at New Year's. I'll right never New forget, Year's. man. <laughs> yeah, that was that was painful New Year's to walk into. Um, I don't know what you have to do. I don't know if you have to talk to like past Ohio State coaches or have a Ohio State coach summit. You got to get it together, bro. Because if you beat, if you lose to Penn State and lose to Michigan this year, you're not coaching next year. No, it's bad. Michigan is unacceptable because they are so bad. If they, no, they, they, they yeah, are ass. They, they right, yes, it. they are. They yes, are. They yes, fucking they are. Ass. <laughs> they, if you lose Michigan, no, goddamn. no. There's a there's as there's a no shot because that's in Columbus. I, it is. There's a no shot. No, if he wa- he cannot walk out of that game in a loss. They won't and let him. Because that means we lose to them, we will not make the playoffs. I will say that right now. One hundred percent. But I, he just got to get together. I don't know what he needs to do. But he got to get it together. I think the other big thing with Ohio State with this loss, too, which everyone was making fun of, which is, I mean, Byron looked it up himself. This is the problem now. Everyone knows you spent $20 million on this roster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I looked up uh, Denzel Burke's NIL. He gets uh, $675,000 of NIL money. That's to get cooked like that. Damn. Is we Kane's didn't pay- one of them? 
<laughs> no, not, we are, we're not paying Will Howard 500k to 1 million to slide in the middle of the field where time expires. Right. Well, that's the problem too with that stuff too, because it's like, brother, we, 20 million, and y'all giving up almost 500 total yards of offense. Mm-hmm. No pressure on the quarterback. Like JTT Jack Sawyer, what y'all doing, bro? They've been non-existent, five star recruits. non-resistant, existent that game. Not nowhere. Like JTT, you yeah, have one game against Penn State. Almost two. Where years have you ago. been? Yeah, almost two years ago. Jack Sawyer. Oh. These are captains too, if, man. Yeah, captains of our defense. I don't know. They get a body what? this week. So this is a stat like Jim knows is like one and five or something like that. Yeah. Uh, top five games of Jim knows of us of him coaching the defense. 2022 Michigan, we gave up five, which is absurd to even say five thirty. Mm-hmm. Yes, 2022 sir. Georgia, five thirty-three. Yes. 2023 mm-hmm. Michigan, three I don't see that's a good three thirty-eight. Um, that one's good. Yeah. I, I know he said it. No, <laughs> and then 2024 Oregon 496. So that's 1,897 yards and 149 points at his top five. And these are Jim Knowles higher and his top five games as the defensive coordinator because obviously he came after the BAM and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Those are his top nice. games as a coordinator. You guys did it. Yeah, we lost every one of them. We lost every one of them. I was going to say, you're on five. (laughs) Yeah, he's on five. (laughs) In the big games, yeah, we lost every one of them. See, that just gets me, like, stats like that gets me nervous against, like, Penn State. Oh, it gets me nervous a couple weeks ago when Ohio State fans were rejoicing when Michigan got smoked by Texas. And I'm looking around, I was like, why are we laughing? Can we beat Texas? After this game? No. Fuck no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. Like, oh, Lord. Quinn Ewers is back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I'm looking around now. It's like, all right. These are the teams we're going to have to play if we want to get what we need to get. Like, could we beat mm-hmm. them? Would Cam Ward and those boys put a show on our heads? We already talked about Milrow. Like, shh. You know what do, I was thinking. Do I want about? to go to Georgia at night in the playoffs? Oh no! <laughs> like if somehow Boise State gets that group of five. Oh, back. which right now they if the season they would yeah. I'm not trying to go against Ashton Genty. We, we can't <laughs> stop the run right now. I know <laughs> we can't. Right, right. You understand this man's going to win his Heisman Trophy off of kicking our ass. <laughs> like if that was yes, I know. Happen, That'd be wild. You saw what he did. See, that's, I'm glad you brought that up, Cedric and Byron, because that's another thing. What happened to our run game? We saw what Genty did to them, and obviously, I mean, we have some pretty damn good backs. We got two of them. Mm-hmm. Like, what mm-hmm. happened? I think after the Jutkins fumble, which honestly, I can't be mad at Jutkins mm-hmm. because that was an amazing. That was an amazing play by the tackle. Mm-hmm. The defensive mm-hmm. tackle made an amazing play. For something that's happening that fast in the holes to get on the ball and actually most running backs hold it nice high and tight and you can't get your arm in there to rip it away to get to find that time in that like literally seconds you have to just commit to that to rip it out that was an amazing fucking play I think they ran away from the run play after that because Anderson he had the 87 yards but he had a long run of 53. Take away that 53-yard run, he wasn't really doing nothing. No. Junkins only had 23, which I never thought I'd say this here. He only had 23 right. yards rushing. Yards. Like, combined, they had 20, what, 21 carries? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Henderson had the more hot hand. I think we should have been feeding him more than we were Junkins. No offense to Junkins. It was just a bad game for him. But Trayvon Henderson was Moving the ball more efficiently than Judkins was. Yeah. I don't know. It is what it is now. It's just, I don't think, obviously, we knew there was a possibility of losing this game, but it's just the way mm-hmm. we lost that we're already talking about Ryan Day and the defense and all that. And Ryan Day skipping the Tuesday show that he's mandatory to do because he gets paid six figures to do it, if you didn't know that. Um, That's some whole behavior. He said he had recruiting, but he was at the bye week one the last time. 
when they won. Oh, behavior, man. So here we are. One loss isn't the end of the world, but our level of error has really shrunk. Mm -hmm. Because we got a top three. Well, if they stay, we got a top three matchup in two weeks. At their place. Another one. Yeah. Does Penn State have they play Wisconsin? Oh, what? Is it S- what's, it's at Wisconsin, isn't it? I believe mm-hmm. so, yeah. Because I think mm. it's supposed to be like a, a joke, like a hollow. I think it's going to be like a Halloween jump around type. type Shit. Thing. And they prove themselves this week. They can deal with some of the pressure. And we're going to go right into that. Perfect segue, because this we had the 12. Did this week deliver or freaking what? Obviously, we had the close game. I mean, you look across the board, all the top games that we talked about. The Florida-Tennessee went into overtime. LSU Old Miss went into overtime. Kansas State, Colorado was a three-point game. The only ass-whooping was ten- Texas and Oklahoma. And then mm-hmm. Central, you said Penn State and USC went into overtime. At the very beginning, Penn State looked like they were going to get ran out the gym. But they persevered. I I have to give props to James Franklin. Again, I thought they were, that first half, they were down double digits. Mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, this, the discourse was about to happen to this man on social media is not going to be good. But oh, Yeah, he, he would have got cooked because they were down 20 to 6 at halftime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aller Came back was, to win 33 to 30. Aller was not good. He was throwing picks left and right. Mm-hmm. I mean, we already talked about Warren having a literally a record day, the 17 for 224 and a tutty. Mm-hmm. Like, you go Penn State scoring 14 in the third to USC's three, 10 in the fourth to Penn USC seven, and then the all the mistakes that USC made. I, I have to give them props for this. I, Penn State showed me something. Yeah, yeah they did. Um, got more nerves about that Ohio State game. But on the other side, Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> it, that, that is bad. That's bad, man. Your season's hanging on by a thread, trying to do whatever you can to do something. And you give this up at home? Yeah. You're three and three. I saw something like he's four out of his last 12 or some crazy stat. Like he's had a losing record these past couple games. And they're not tough. Like they're not. <laughs> they're seeing no. what this Big Ten about. They, that cute boy stuff don't work here. Yeah. They got beat by Michigan, now Penn State. And they lost again to Minnesota. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they're that, free. Yeah, three. that is the Golden Gophers. Yeah, so they're, they're already on a they're on a two game losing streak. They play Maryland at Maryland <laughs> on the nineteenth. Then they got Rutgers, Wisconsin, Nebraska, UCLA. And then they end the season on Notre Dame. But yes, sir. Any hope for a big any Big Ten thing? That's over. Yeah, it's a wrap. Over. They Is there Owen three in the Big Ten? Yeah. I said so they got three Big Ten losses. So, it, it's oh, they're one and three in the Big Ten. They beat somebody. They beat Wisconsin. Yep, yeah, Wisconsin. 38 to 21. That was when they came off of blowing the game against Michigan. Yep. Mm hmm. So I, shoot, they may take another one or two Big Ten losses too before the season's out. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, the way they play, can you? I mean, you could see it. I mean, you lost to Michigan. You saw what Washington did to them. Like Nebraska Man. will be interesting if they're still in the mix. Hey, yeah. Raiola is no joke. Because yeah, I mean USC one and three in the Big Ten. The only people they have better records than are Maryland, Purdue, and UCLA. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just they suck. They're not good. I don't know. I mean, man. I mean, is it time for Lincoln? Oh, to I possibly mean, they start to think about, hey, maybe not Lincoln. I 
To be honest, with the way he coaches quarterbacks and offensive mind, I'm not even trying to say this team's name to get Byron riled up. Byron, he might be the offensive coordinator of the Saints next year. No, I think it would keep Clint Kubiak another year. Uh, not Clint, Clint Kubiak. I can't this, think of his name right now. I know, yeah. But he's going to get an NFL coaching like coordinator job. Yeah. If you need a coordinator, because this... This head coach thing, because, like, bro, if Oregon's staying this good, yard, we're putting $20 million in the team, so Ohio State should be this good for a long time. Where, where's your avenue? What happens when Michigan gets rolling again? It might take a couple of years. Yeah. What if, Raiola, mm-hmm. if Raiola becomes super, super sweet, we still got two more years of him. Mm-hmm. Like, where's your avenue? You, you're, you lost three Big Ten teams. Games that you didn't play Oregon or Ohio State this year. You even got gr- blessed. You didn't have to play them in your first schedule. That's not the conference spell. <laughs> and you didn't, and you still have three Big Ten L's. Yeah. So I don't know what you do there, man. But these other games, like Texas, they they just that was just bad. That was bad. Old Miss and LSU, they really went at it. Mm-hmm. Like that overtime, like seeing it at the end and LSU pulling it out in the end, that was just amazing. You want to talk about coaching for his job? Florida's Napier was coaching for his job in that Florida game against Tennessee, but Tennessee took care of it in overtime. And then Alabama, who you know everyone thought bounced back, they were the dog fight till the end against South Carolina. Man, South Carolina almost had it. Man, their quarterback had. Two crucial, crucial overthrows. One on that two point conversion, and one on that last play that turned into an inter- interception after they recovered the onside kick. Maybe Tennessee and Bama were both looking ahead. I think, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Because this this is a pseudo eliminator. I mean, for that road to the SEC championship game, they're the second biggest game. Because this weekend, those two big games belong to the SEC. Because you got, and they're both on the same network too, which is wild. You got Alabama and Tennessee at three thirty, and then the big, big Georgia going to Texas seven thirty ABC night game. Georgia needs that game bad. They do. If they want to tell everyone, don't write us off. We're still we're still top boys around here. You got to win this because. Since this Kirby championship era, they've only lost to one team, and that's been Alabama. Yep. So if you want to keep it like that, then Nick, yeah, I do it, man. Who who y'all got in that one? That's at Texas too. Oh, at Texas mm-hmm. night game, coming off a great win against Oklahoma. I think I'll have to go with Texas, man. I I can't believe I'm. I can't see Kirby losing two games in a regular season. I mean, I can't either. We didn't think Saban would lose two games in a regular season. He did. That's true, but that that, ain't, that wasn't often. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> but these are like early. Like you lost that Bama game, and oh my gosh, man. I don't even know. Who's, yeah. Texas I think Texas, favorite, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Four point, I think. Four yeah, points? Oh, man. According to ESPN bet. I don't know which Carson Beck has showed up. If the one who showed up in that first half against Alabama, it's over. And mm-hmm. that's going to be bad. That place is going to be, that Texas State, that place is going to be rocking. The celebrities mm-hmm. are going to be there. Like, Matthew McConaughey. Mm-hmm. Probably Vince Young. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I really feel like, oh, my God. I think Georgia's going to have, like you like Cedric said, Georgia got to win, man. I got to pick Georgia because they, they, they need it more. It is a must win for Georgia. Like, they have more to prove than Texas does. Yeah, but well, Georgia, you don't want to F her out and not make it to your conference championship game. Mm-hmm. And then maybe the right now. Chance. That y'all might have to come to Columbus and play us in the cold. Yeah. The crazy thing is, like, if the SEC ended today, 
A and M and Texas would be in the conference championship. A and M's been sneaking since mm-hmm. they lost to Notre Dame. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I can't. I mean, Cedric, who are you feeling? This is this is a mega matchup, man. Man, I man, this sucks because I like both quarterbacks too. Uh I'm man. I'm gonna end up being wrong, and I'm okay with that. I'm I'm going to say Georgia. I think they've had a lot of close fights. I, mean, I said the same thing when they played Alabama. I was like, this team, when down, can play. It's just how down are you going to be? Like, mm-hmm. for me, the Alabama game, I, that was as down bad as I think you were going to get, and that's Alabama. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And they came back and battled. I I still believe that if that team, that this Georgia team starts off red hot. I don't know if there's anyone in the nation that can stop them. Mm-hmm. If they start off red hot going, I don't know that there's a team in the nation that can keep up with them. Mm-hmm. And so we saw how that went and they lost by a touchdown. And Alabama started with like a 28 nothing win. Like 28 to zero. So mm-hmm. This Georgia team has shown that it can put up points. It's just how, honestly, I would like to think that Carson Beck would not be on some bullshit. Kirby Smart would not be on some bullshit like we've been saying, that they need this win, that we cannot afford a slow start. We need to come out slinging and hitting them hard. Yeah, they got it. I mean, for Georgia, you got to win because I feel like if Texas gets off to a fast start, because Texas' defense is better than Alabama's defense, they ain't letting that 28 mm-hmm. points. If they get up 28 0, it's a wrap. Oh, yeah, no. That, that ain't happening. And both teams, and the fact that both these teams play before Alabama and Tennessee, which that has big implications too. Like, Byron, who you got in that one? Uh, and, this is at ten- and this is at Tennessee. Oh, back in Knoxville. <laughs> yeah, we, we saw the last time there was a big game, Alabama, Tennessee, and Knoxville. Yep, 3-30 in Tennessee. I think, man, I don't know who needs this win more. So they both teams have both been struggling the past couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Like before, I probably would have said Tennessee. Oh, man. I'm going to have to go Bama. Okay. Sudder? I'm going with Bama only because Tennessee has been bullshitting recently. And I, I hope they come serious. I hope they come ready to go against this Alabama team because, you know, the motivation is there. Mm-hmm. But this is the same Tennessee team that lost a, a a tough Arkansas team. Hmm. Honestly, Tennessee's schedule kind of sucks right now. Because they got Alabama, they got the bye, and then they got to play Kentucky. Which Kentucky ain't no hoes. So, this is going to be a moment. Then you got Mississippi State. Then you got to play Georgia. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, I'm rolling with Alabama. I still don't. I don't think this Tennessee offense is as consistent as it could be. And I think, honestly, Milrow, for what it's worth, Milrow is like, listen, I got the offense down. Our defense, we give up points. But we try to score points as well. So Milrow wants to get that Heisman back. He needs to win these next three games. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, at Tennessee, the 19th. Versus Missouri on the 26th, and then by, and then at LSU. Oh, uh, we could chalk that. That LSU game is going to be a full moon night. Let's let's just get that out the way. <laughs> and right, let's get that out the way. And LSU is there quietly too. They're number eight right now. Mm-hmm. Like if Alabama wants to, because the way they're bullshitting too, they could either win these three or they can go on a little losing streak. 
Because, you know, after LSU, they got Mercer. Of course. <laughs> Oop. And, then, <laughs> and they're and all to Oklahoma, which should be a win. And then yeah, Oklahoma, yeah. The Auburn goes with them. And then yeah, Tennessee, and then, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tennessee. I don't know. We we saw them boys that last time, man. It was, I don't know if they're gonna step up. Alabama's a favorite, but I just can't. Tr- I'm gonna be wrong. I'm gonna take Tennessee. I'm, I'm gonna throw it okay. out there for them. All right, all right. Just because you beat Alabama, like you said, Kentucky's obviously no home. Mississippi State. If you beat Alabama and you beat Georgia and win out, you're going to the SEC championship game like this. You got your pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's a big pass because those are some juggernauts and some people who are ruining who will ruin dreams in there, like in Kentucky. But hey, there's a Vanderbilt in there too. There's a Vanderbilt who's ruined some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah. So I, I just feel like that's gonna be the case. And now if you're a Big Ten, if you're an Ohio State fan, you got to pay attention to the Nebraska Indiana game, 12 p.m. Big noon kickoff. That's big. Mm-hmm. You got to pay attention to that. You got to pay attention to what Illinois is doing against Michigan at 3:30. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, we got to take care of business, but now we got to look around. Is it Illinois. Yeah, they were just in a battle with Purdue, uh, 50 to 49. Yeah. 50 to 49. <laughs> <laughs> and they were up like a, by a bunch before Purdue started storming back. Yeah, Purdue just ruined stuff for people, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were up 27 to 3. And then Purdue said, hold your horses. <laughs> That's wild. That's wild. So, yeah, pay attention to that in Nebraska. Buckeyes are on a bye. For the casuals, this is your best chance to just watch some other teams and see what's going on, measure up. But we got to pay attention to what Nebraska and Indiana are doing. We got to. Because mm-hmm. they might creep up on us. The Indiana game might be a top 10 matchup if Indiana keeps holding serve. But yeah. we know this is college football. One of these top teams randomly is going to lose on Saturday. <laughs> Who? We don't know. But someone is going to lose. We have not had chalk in a minute. Yeah, I love the chaos, man. Cedric, who's your performance of the week? I mean, it's going to tight end in Penn State. <laughs> that man, like, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. In my mind, I don't know who else I would give it to. Of all the positions that you play, you getting 200 yards receiving. <laughs> like, you playing tight end. My dog is out there eating, and he threw a pass for nine yards. Mm-hmm. He was trying to do it all on the field. Yeah, I, I don't disagree, man. Not in the wit. Go ahead, uh, Byron. Well, that was actually going to be my performer of the week, but I will go somewhere else. Um, I'm actually going to go with. I got to get his name. Uh, Caleb Johnson, the running back out of Iowa. 21 carries, 166 yards, two touchdowns. He was basically running it down Washington's throat. We just came out against that big win against Michigan uh, the week prior, but ended up losing to the Iowa Hawkeyes, who dropped 40, which we've done a couple times this season. So when their offense can go, it can go. Man. Obviously, with the stuff with Dylan Gabriel, seeing that in my own eyes and doing that to the Buckeyes, I thought about him, but I'm going to give a duo, and this might spark some things, because, you know, Kyle McCord. Okay. Because, you know, he had a smooth 31-42, 346, two tutties. And then his wide receiver, Jackson Meeks, 11 catches, 116, one tutty. Mm. And don't look now. The Syracuse Orange are 5-1. and one. Mm-hmm. They're coming for the ACC. 
I, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. They're just quietly, he's just quietly playing well. I mean, the ACC, they got Pittsburgh coming up, which, and that's mm-hmm. after they might lose that. But, and then Virginia Tech, we saw how hard they played against Miami. But in theory, Syracuse can make it all the way to the last game against Miami with only one L. And man, that would, oh, that'd be such a huge game if they pull it off. Can you imagine the discourse here in Columbus if Ohio State doesn't make the Big Ten championship game, but McCord and took Syracuse to the ACC title game? That will wow. be fine. And then he takes out Dabo! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the amount of shit that would be talked oh, by Kyle Lord. McCord <laughs> oh, would be rightfully so. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. Honestly, we deserve every single bit of it. And he mm-hmm. just jot his name on the list of OSU quarterbacks that didn't get the burn they needed and went and got their chip somewhere else. Yeah, because he's playing his way, man. Like, this is – I'm seeing these 340 – I'm like, bro, what is going on? And he has less talent he's doing it with. Mm-hmm. Could have been, like Cedric said, we just let him go too early. Yeah. So far, he has – 2,160 passing yards. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He's going nuts, bro. I like it. I like it, man. We're... Is that for the career? No, it should be team leaders. Yeah. Team leaders, but we'll see. Uh, Since... Byron, you wanted this. I'll give you a special request. I'll give you. Tra- I'll let you do a trash can. I'll let you do a trash can. <laughs> man, I gotta give it up to Denzel Burke just for the trash can of the week, man. I was not expecting him to get cooked like that, bro. Like he got cooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, six hundred seventy-five thousand in NIL money just to get cooked like that, bro. I, I can't. Can't, and we haven't talked shit about him in a long, long time. I feel like we haven't talked shit about a corner since Sean Wade. I feel like we've been very temperamental on the corners. I mean, I I've talked shit about Denzel Burke last year. Yeah, last year, yeah, but not to the degree of Sean Wade. Oh well, no, I fucking hate that nigga still. (laughs) (laughs) And it's only because he was talking shit that caught my attention. Talking about I'm the best lockdown corner in the league. Yeah, yeah, right. (laughs) Where is he at now? Ooh, I can tell you. Give me a minute. Yeah. I think he got drafted by the Ravens. I don't know if he's still there. Yeah, we just... It's been a minute. That It's just like, man, to get cooked like that on the national stage. Ooh. He is currently with the Los Angeles Chargers. Is he on the practice squad? Because I know that nigga ain't started. <laughs> Um, it doesn't say, it just says he's on. Shit, I'll find it right now. Go to the death chart, <laughs> but uh, I don't think he has any stats. Yeah, it doesn't look like he has any stats for this year so far. I haven't tried. So, do I? Oh, mine's going to Mr. Rising. Welcome back, mm-hmm. sir. Throwing those three interceptions. All this time, they've been waiting for you. And damn it, you lost to Arizona State. Yeah. Though I did see that he may get another medical red shirt <laughs> since he hasn't played enough, so he may play his eighth year college football. I don't know. Honestly, Bubba, I think it's just time to just go your way. Like, either you make it to the league or you don't. I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's making it to the league, man. Well, I know, Byron, it was a, more of a. You're not making it to the league, but I don't want to say here saying he needs to wash cars or some shit. Like the guys, <laughs> like the guys don't came back and like it's honestly like because that program and that office looks for him to play. But at this point, they were doing better without him. And so when you come back and this is one of those intense games for Utah, like it's Arizona State. That's a tough game on their schedule every time they play because they know Arizona State. Play hard as fuck against them. And my dude, 16 for 37. 
sure, 209 yards, but three interceptions. It was a close game. Shout out to the running back having 129 yards rushing. But yeah, Cam Rising, it's my trash can. Uh, before I say mine, I just wanted to give some uh, most watched college football games of the week um, at this, this big week. OSU Oregon was number one, averaged 10 million. Texas, Oklahoma, 7.6. South Carolina, Alabama, 6 million. Penn State, USC, 4.3 million. Ole Miss, LSU, 4.2. K-State, Colorado, 3.3. Florida, Tennessee, 3.2. Those are the biggest games of this week. Um, I, I mean, Denzel work is it was just bad. I won't even say that. I'll just say one move. I'm going to go to Shiloh uh, Sanders because his ankles got absolutely fucking snatched. <laughs> <laughs> and when your own daddy says you played like garbage, yeah. I, yeah. yeah but I'm going to leave it at that. Like that. Your own papa said you played like garbage and you were horrible. Now you're saying like, yeah, I got, I can't get embarrassed like that again because your ankles, that running, that running back put you on skates like he was prime oh one Allen Iverson. Like that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Freaking snap! Like you really got crossed on the football field and fell on your butt. Yes, yes, like, yes, you did. Allen Iverson, Akashi Sergio from Cork. Everybody, you got crossed. <laughs> Man, Martin, I need you to go through this episode once and just listen to how many basketball references you made during a football <laughs> podcast. <laughs> it was Bro, hilarious. His ankles got literally yanked from his from his kneecaps. Like, was, like running them out the gym, his ankles got snatched. <laughs> like, <laughs> God. I, I just sat there quiet. I'm like, brother, what? And you're the you're the son of the greatest corner ever? Come on. Bad. Bad. I mean. Shout out to Kansas State, man. I thought you were about to say shout out to his ankles. I was like, what? No, no, no. Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did not think they were going to beat the Colorado Buffaloes, but Me either, they but... went to their stadium and won. Like, they're running back 182 yards on 25 carries. Like, Colorado does not have a run defense, man. Well, yeah. Or a um, run game. <laughs> Byron, you got any winners and losers? I have a loser. Um, okay. Actually, Cam Rising was going to be one of my losers, but I already took that. Um, I'm actually going to go with the Bills and Jets. They had 22 penalties for 204 yards. That is absolutely ass. Mm. <laughs> okay. Like, they both had 11 penalties. Like, beat it up, bro. <laughs> oh, God. All right. But no winners. I don't think of, I mean, shout out to the fans because it was a great week of college football. Oh. Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. Cedric. Oh man. Um winners, the Detroit Lions. Mm, my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was that Jared Goff, honestly, that whole office, Jared Goff, David Montgomery. It was like they all just went super mode, like, we gotta go. Out here and play our fucking asses off, throwing up, putting up forty-seven points in a tough environment. They're in Dallas, like that's not mm-hmm. an easy place to play at. And honestly, from an offense, but normally Jared Goff sucks on the road. Put a mm-hmm. three to fifteen yards, three tutties. Like he's trying to make some disbelievers out there, saying, "Hey, I can do this on the road and away, wherever I need to go." Uh, losers. Everyone that watched the Browns and Philadelphia Eagles game, because boy, did I feel like a loser watching that shit. I am so sorry that we were on national television and we disappointed you all like that. There's a reason why the game against the Bengals got moved to one o'clock in exchange for the Bears and Commanders game to get moved in the afternoon because they know let's get this shit show over with early. So when the real football happens, ain't nobody got to worry about no shit because I we had a full, healthy run. I mean, yeah, got it with Dow. We only scored 20 fucking points. God, that was fucking pitiful. And the Browns didn't even score an actual offensive touchdown. They got a blocked punt for blocked field goal for a touchdown. Like, what the fuck is happening? That was a fucking pitiful game. I honestly was not entertained. And, you know, I just wish they would just yank all of our TV appearances and just, like, make us play in the backyard somewhere at this point. Shit. Why not? Oh, <laughs> uh, loser! One of them is Jerry Jones because 
Brother, your team almost gave up 50 points on your birthday. Oh, it was his birthday? That's it was his birthday. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so fucked up. On your birthday. On your birthday. Almost a 50 burger. They could have given you a 50 burger. Like, that was just a tr- That was bad. Wait, I'm curious. How? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, go ahead. Oh, my no, nah, but that that was that was that. Um, another loser. Be crazy, Ohio State fans. Let's let's pump the brakes a little bit. It is only October. We don't need to call for anyone's job right now. Let's let's wait till we see where we end up at the end of the year. We're we're gonna be okay if we play the standard we want to play at. Mm-hmm. Um, now it is funny. Social media is funny when Ohio State loses because that algorithm kills me. Because the shit I start seeing, it is hilarious. But we need to, we need to relax. Oregon's a really good team. They're the number two team in the country for a reason. So let's take it easy there. Uh, okay. win- winners, man, this is this is actually tough. Like I don't know if anyone really won. I um oh, I can't believe I'm gonna do this, man. James Franklin and and Brian Kelly, like both coaches really showed me something over the weekend because they've obviously blown big leads and all of mm-hmm. that. So I especially James Franklin because the original one, the James Franklin of the South. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Brian Kelly. No, 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 no. Um, I'm a, Lane I'm a, Kiffin. Lane oh, Kiffin. Lane Kiffin, he yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah. So the South. The South version lost. The West Coast version lost. So, hey, the OG standing tall this weekend. No. Can't Man. believe it. I gave a winner to James <laughs> Franklin. And I might be here giving him loser next time because that's what Penn State does. Wow. <laughs> well, at least they're consistent. At least they're consistent. But with that being said, thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. Make sure you like, rate, comment, subscribe. Remember, the Buckeyes are on a bye week. So watch some other football games. Take it in. We lo- I know we lost the game in October. We will be all right. We got to trust this team and trust the twenty million dollars we put into this bad boy. So, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. One big, the true big winner. Another one. Army and Navy both being in the top twenty-five. Oh, facts. Yes. 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 Been that, six and zero both. Yeah. Yes. Like that's crazy. So shout out to both of them. Like one of them is ahead of Michigan, which I thought I'd never say out loud. Army is ahead of Michigan in the rankings, and Michigan yeah, and true. Navy's gonna be up behind ahead of them too because Michigan's probably gonna lose to Illinois. Probably. So, well, <laughs> yeah, so shout out to Army and Navy. And with that being said, thank y'all. Listen to L7C podcast. Signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.